very special edition of Mississippi Stories. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey, editor-at-large and editorial cartoonist of Mississippi Today, and we are in Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Um, uh, for those of you who have not been paying attention to the news, Rolling Fork, Mississippi, uh, which was famous already because that's where Teddy Roosevelt didn't shoot the bear, and that's how we got the teddy bear, right? Um, great town. I was in it a few days before an EF4 tornado actually came right through the gut of Rolling Fork and destroyed almost everything. It's just absolutely. One of my good friends is sitting with me right now and she's the, the editor of the Deer Creek Pilot. And she also wears another hat that has kept her working 12 to 14 hour days on top of being a journalist. Um, she also does emergency management for, for Sharkey County. And um, Natalie Perkins, I, I'm just so glad that you're here with me here today. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, tell us a little bit, because like, uh, I, you know, I interviewed you on the radio right after the storm, and I think at that point you were running on 100% adrenaline. I was, I was. Um, I, now you're 99% yeah, adrenaline. Yeah, I'm 99%. <laughs> yes, I've been to the doctor twice um, already, but um, yeah, the exhaustion and the sleepless nights and my brain won't shut off, and the, yeah. just like I just was saying a little while ago, I've learned about things that I didn't, I didn't, I thought I'd never in my life, I had to learn about gravel and debris <laughs> removal, but, but now I know about those things too. Well, when you got into emergency management, like we were talking a little bit before, mm -hmm. you were about, okay, a tornado hits a house. Right. You know, you were helping a family maybe recover or helping mm -hmm. recover. You know, this is all town. Yes. And this was a town that already was challenged, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, because we've had the South Delta flooding, so mm -hmm. you, economically there were some issues. You know, we we were just starting to see a little bit of a rebound from the 2019 flood. Our businesses were, were you know, they were starting to, to pick up just a little bit and then this and, and now most of those businesses are gone. Yeah. You know, we just have a few left. Yeah, there are a lot of, for people that aren't familiar, Highway 61, the famous road that runs uh, the Blues Highway runs through town, and so that's where a lot of, you had a lot of businesses along that, and a few of those did survive. Yes, we still have a grocery store yeah. and, and a gas station, our bumpers, and our Dollar General. Neither one of them have reopened, but, yeah. um, you know, we have a, a Napa store and a yeah. John Deere dealership, but that's just about it. Yeah, that's about it. And like I said, when you, when you literally, um, it hit, and I mean, like I said, within 15 to 20 seconds, everything's changed. When you're in emergency management, we'll get to the journalism side of this too, <laughs> but when you're in emergency management at this point, I mean, obviously it's it's saving lives, rescue right. and recovery right. initially. Yes. Initially, yes, yeah. that's our you know, safety, safety, yeah. and that, that's been, I've preached that yeah. the last, especially in the last week and a half, but at first it was life preservation. Yeah. Um, and, um, and search and rescue, and, and now we're we're phasing into the recovery, and that is going to be a very long and tiring, frustrating road. Yeah. I honestly, when I first drove into town, um, Google took me right almost the same path it took me the other day when I came to the library, and I mean, I just had Katrina flashbacks. It does. It very feels, similar. It feels like yeah. Katrina, and. Um, we're not, you know, you're not supposed to be able to see the courthouse from the highway. Right. Just so, yeah. The I'm glad it's still standing. It's got a, some significant roof damage, but it's yeah. still there. Yeah, I was I was amazed that it was still there because, like I said, that was almost the very middle of the track. Right. It was. On that. Um, you were at a prom that night, weren't you? I was. I was about 15, 20 miles away at a prom with uh, my my daughter who's 17 is a junior and she and I put together a slideshow for the senior class yeah. and we were in the middle of showing the, the slideshow when um, another parent who was there came through the front door of the venue where we were and said my son is trapped in his house a tornado just hit rolling fork and I looked at her and I said I have to go to work yeah. And, you know, and you've been at work ever since. And I've been at work ever since. Yeah, when I talked to you on the Monday the, yeah. after that, you had just seen right. her. I had just seen her. Yeah, which that had to be. That was tough. Yeah. That was really tough. Yeah. But the, like you said before, the kids here in town yeah. have had to grow up very fast yeah. and be grown ups. They have. They yeah. have. They, 
you know, they're working, they're, they're out at our distribution site sorting and driving forklifts and tractors and um, my daughter's running the daycare and yeah, I mean, yeah. that, but they are, yeah, they need to grow up. It's just, and, and I hate that for them, but, but they've been amazing. I, when I pulled into the parking lot, we're, we're here at Bearable Fitness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is new, the Sharkey yeah. County Emergency Operations Center. Yeah, right exactly. Now. I think bear, Bearable is absolutely the perfect name. Yeah. It's like, it's, I'm not sure this is bearable, but we've we, 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 we got to make it bearable. Right, right. You know, we have to get that bear hooky in. Exactly, on <laughs> right. everything. you yeah. got you got to go with what yeah. you're known right. for, right? Right, right. So, but I mean, I thought the irony of it's like, I don't know. But I mean, seriously, you look and you see... There's a cooker out there. It looks like volunteers are cooking yes. somebody yes. some lunch. And then there's a Chick-fil-A thing down there. You said you've eaten a lot of Chick-fil-A. And, and you drank a lot of water. <laughs> yes. But I mean, yes. that's the thing, you know, and I always talk about that, that like, you know, before you can get out of the rubble of your house, there's usually a church van in your front yard right. with chainsaws yeah. and casseroles. And there's an awful lot of that that has gone on here. Like I said, you do emergency management. You're used to small scale stuff. And this is something But you've had, you've had the president came here, yeah. which, you know, who to thunk, right? Yeah, right. But I mean, you're going to get help from the state. You're going to get help from the federal government. So I mean, that's that's the good news. Right. It's just day in and day out doing the work. Yeah. And even that, um, we're we are so blessed and fortunate to have a team of professionals from Jacksonville, Florida, in here yeah. right now that have taken. They they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They're used to responding to hurricanes. Yeah. And, they they've taken a, a big load of work off so, yeah but it's still constant yeah just constant it's i, I can't leave here until six o'clock at night i get here at 7 15 and i leave at six o'clock um, then i try to find an hour or two of peace i was going to ask what do you do to unwind or you, is there anything you can do to unwind you put out a newspaper. I put out a newspaper. <laughs> <In> your spare time. <laughs> That's why, you know, when I come back to work, or when I come back here on Wednesday morning, everybody's like, well, did you get some rest yesterday? Well, if you call sitting at a computer all day putting a newspaper out and being yeah. stressed, rest, then sure, I rested yesterday. Yeah. But um, no, I, I, seven days a week I'm going. Yeah, I'm going to break the wall here for a half second. Hey, Candy. Could you grab, no, that's fine. Could you grab the Deer Creek pilot that's on the desk there? Because I want to hold it up. I, I wanted to make sure that I showed, this was the first edition back of the Deer Creek pilot. He took over for Ray when he passed away. And, and uh, Ray, the legendary Ray Mosby, I mean, like he said, I, I always try and think how he would respond to this, but I know how he would respond to it, because he responded to it the same way you responded to it. Um, he would have put out a full surprise worthy newspaper, which this is. and. I don't have one to give you. I would. Um, sorry, <laughs> I came close a couple times. If I had one, I'd give you mine. This is amazing. I mean, this is incredible that you were able to um, tell the stories. But you also, I see Scott Boyd's uh, cut line yes, there. Had some, you, you had some, some angels. Angels came yes. swooping in yes. to help yes. you too. And that, and once again, not only you know helping out with recovery, that having a few angels came in, but from the journalism community, you've had yes. some support. I have. Absolutely. Lane Bruce has set up a GoFundMe for the Mississippi Press Associations to help you a little bit. Because like I said, you know, the economy wasn't exactly super strong before this for newspapers. No. So I you, had, you know, we had that conversation I, on Tuesday yes, about when all the buildings were still yes, standing. Yes, you know. just a handful of advertisers that are, I mean, you know, we don't, our, our businesses don't have competition because we have one of everything. Yeah. So, um, you know, they advertise out of the goodness of their hearts. Yeah. And, um, and just to support me in the community. Yeah. And um, now they're gone, so my revenue base is gone. Yeah. So, um, but. And I will put a, I will put a link, by the way, in this video thing to the GoFundMe to be able to help the Deer Creek pilot because, folks, if you don't believe that a local newspaper is important and to tell the stories and to tell it honestly and truthfully, it's it's great when somebody comes in for the day and tries to tell Rolling Fork's story, but somebody who knows the people. I mean, you read through the paper here and you can tell there's like heart dripping all through this. So I could end of nice things to say. I don't, know, I don't want you to get a big head. This really is amazing. Um, yeah, I was, I love this right here. And we've been standing since, and we will stand back. I mean, just, 
heads and everything else. So congratulations, and you've put out two now? Yes. Yeah, two, yes. and you're... And I, and I do have to say, my, my employee, Amy, she's just part-time, but yeah. boy, she has worked her tail off. Um, but she has put out a call on, on Facebook, and we've had some out-of-town advertisers pony up, and we've got, got ads in the paper this week. Last week, I had two ads. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this week, we're, it's a little better. Yeah. Yes. Those will run out. Too. And you spend one you spend one day a week, you know, kind of getting everything together. But um, yeah, yeah. wow, that's, that's about all the time so, I can give it. Well, you know, you, you've got some your day jobs kind of getting in the way right now a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So where does where does Rolling Fork go over the next? Or is it? Are y'all are just still in the day by day? Space? We're we're still in the day by day. We are um, just. Right now, the focus is getting the debris out so that we can ensure that the infrastructure is, yeah. is stable. You know, every, all the utilities are trying to get back in working order. And, um, you know, every time a water line breaks, it stresses the system. Yeah. You know, and it's just, that's just right now, we're just still trying to get back that. Yeah. Um, and then my heart breaks every time I hear somebody say, well, I'm going to sell my lot. I'm not going to build my house back. Yeah. And I know that that won't be everybody, but I'm afraid that it will be more than growing for can Yeah. I think most of our businesses okay. will build back. Um, I know several of them are already in the process. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just sad. Yeah. It really, really is sad because Rolling Fork has so much history and so much culture. And I mean, we have the Blues and Muddy Waters. We have Teddy Roosevelt and the Fairs and we have Indian Mounds. And and it's just, we have so much. And, uh, and I just, I hate to see my town suffer. But uh, anyway, but it's we're strong. strong. It's strong. We're strong about to say, um, We are strong. And I, I said that in the paper last week. And we said it again this week. We are a resilient people. You're a prime example of that because, like you said, you didn't think you had the strength to be able to handle all the stuff that you're doing. And um, you, <laughs> when the dam does break, it's probably going to be incredible. <laughs> you know. But that's okay. That'll mean the danger's passed. And so, when the president came, obviously, Secret Service, the strategy, you know, it's obviously a big thing, but it was good that he came. It, it, for nothing else, you know, wherever the president goes, the focus of the right. nation goes. And so you've got probably, you'll probably be getting more help down the road from that. So for, did you get a chance to meet him? No. No, no. <laughs> no I was here working. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I didn't working. know if he swung by and said, hey. No, you know, here, no, here. no, 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 I didn't. Um, my, our emergency management director, Frank, I believe, he, yeah. he met him. But, yeah. Um, no, I, I was, I stayed here and worked. Yeah, it's really weird because I mean, as many presidents as I made fun of, and I actually did get to meet one. I met the first book, President Bush, which I was like, "That's, that's kind of cool." Yeah. So, yeah, I'm the president, there you yeah. go. Yeah. So on that, but like I said, it was good. But I mean, it was a great the president come, but it's even better when you look out and see all the volunteers. And I was, I was amazed. Um, Ellen Daniels, who does the Mississippi book, her mom here. I met her at the, uh, at the library uh, for the, uh, the talk, and um, she texted me Friday night saying, "I'm going to go see my." And it was like, and I talked, text another guy said, oh yeah, I'm bringing my cooker up there right away and my chainsaw. And mm -hmm. it, was, it was literally, almost the wind almost stopped blowing and there were people helping. By the time the sun came up, um, Saturday morning on March the 25th, there were already people here. Wow. And yeah. as I drove into town, because I, I, I think I got, I think I went home sometime around three in the morning just because I knew it, Saturday was going to be a long day. Yeah. And I managed two hours of sleep and came back shortly after the sun came up the next morning. That was the toughest drive in the Rolling Fork I've ever had. I could Even imagine. more so than the night before because it was dark and I couldn't see it. Yeah. But I could see it Saturday morning. But by the time I came, got into town that Saturday morning, there were already people coming. You... you it got me when I got to 16, you know, mm -hmm. and where it curves off and then you go into downtown and all that. And I just, like you said, you can see the courthouse. Right. Like, we're I could, I could see houses, you know, some of the houses that 
are still standing that you couldn't, they were hidden behind trees and other houses and that now you can see them from the road and yeah. that it's just the, the change in the landscape is amazing. Right. It's just, it's, I mean, all the old growth oaks, yeah, and yeah. so forth. Mm -hmm. How much of the town do you get? Um, roughly 85%. 85%. 546 homes. Wow. And, well, structures. That does not include governmental buildings. That just is, yeah. that's the, the businesses and the homes. And the tax base. And the tax base, yes. Yeah. yeah. A and few outside of, town, outside of the actual city limits. Yeah. But the, in the county, it's 546. Wow. Yeah, because I saw where it went across in 14 also. Yeah. yeah but, on its way up to Silver yeah, City. There were a few, a few homes out um, off, out, you know, off of 14 and, and some that were just west of Roman Fork. One of the things that really touched me going through this first paper were the first obituaries coming in. Yeah. It's tough because when, you when you're in a town like Rolling Fork, you know everybody. Yeah. And so they, they were your friends and people that you know, your customers and so forth. And so it's, um, but like I said, right now you're still in get stuff done. Yeah. Yeah. There's probably a cruder term for that. That'd be more accurate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I was going to ask on that. I mean, obviously, Humor's got to play some role of in this. Of course, we have to laugh. We just yeah. have to. Yeah. We have to feel. We have to find a reason to smile every day, and we all. Yeah. 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 Have y'all heard from any other town? Like there, like, I think it was Greens, Greensburg, Kansas, that got wiped out. Have you heard from any other towns that have offered any help or anything? Oh, there are towns all over the country that have sent sent supplies and vehicles and manpower wow. and. Oh, it's just the response has been, I've said it a hundred times, overwhelming. Yeah. I mean, it really is overwhelming. And I'm, I'm going to tell you that when, when we get past this yeah. and somebody else needs my help, I'll, I'll You're going to be there. Yeah. You're gonna be there. I will. yeah, I mean, we're filming this right before Easter. Mm -hmm. And obviously not to get super preachy, but the whole idea of, of resurrection uh, for Easter. I think that message hits really home for Royal yeah, Court right now. It's coming back. Yeah, I am. Um, don't get teary on me I'm now. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're, you're allowed to get to, If anybody in this universe that I have ever made cry on an interview, you definitely deserve it. But I mean, I was driving by the Chapel of the Cross and, and, and it's gone. You know, it's like one of the oldest churches, not the oldest Episcopal church in, in the state. It was right there. And I go to Chapel of the Cross, you know, the other one. So, um, but it'll come back, it'll be rebuilt, and, and this will all come back. In the meantime, you need to take care of yourself. I know that's not time for that right now, no. but, but you know, we I'm need, trying. We I'm need trying. you, really we need the trying. Deer Creek pilot, Thank you. and we need your stories. Thank you. Let me know how I can help. Um, she did run one of my cartoons, by the way. She wrote really big, so I was really honored. So <laughs> if I can help you fill space, I'll do that. I just have to make sure I draw a little bit better in the future so that it looks better. But. Is there anything that somebody watching this right now can do to help Rolling Fork? There's, I mean, we need so much. I mean, just, um, just reach out and that's the best thing to do is just to reach out to us because our needs change every day. Yeah. Pray, yeah. pray for us and um, and then when, we, when, then when we build back, come see us. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, come get a good meal. Mm -hmm. Come check out. Chuck's is, up, is, Chuck's is going to build back. Yeah. You know, that, that's the thing that made me the maddest about coming in late that night. Because mm -hmm. I was going to eat at Chuck's for yeah. dinner. And I came in, I was like, oh, I'm running late. So I'm, I was like, that's okay. Oh, I'll take some pictures. And then I was like, I'll bring my son up maybe next weekend. Mm -hmm. and then, but we're going to be able to do that again. And it, it's all going to be back. Be good, and we pick up a copy of the Deer Creek Pilot, and, and uh, you can actually probably get a day off. <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe in six months or so. Maybe, maybe in six months or so. Yeah, but yeah, thank I you. I am taking Sunday off. Are you really? That's a good Sunday thing. Off. We're taking Sunday. I think that's that's yeah, appropriate. Yeah. So, um, thank you for taking the time to sit down with us. And tell us a little bit. Like I said, I yeah, don't know if I put together a great interview, and I. I look out the window even and can see the need. I'm, I'm amazed that the hospital 
survived as well. Yeah. Yeah, we just had it didn't do well. It didn't do so well. Yeah. Um, it's like got some structural, structural right. issues. Um, we have a field hospital at the old armory that out I mean, yeah. that we're offering complete hospital services out there. Oh yes. Yeah. Now it looks like a mass unit instead of yeah. um, a hospital, but but they can offer the same same services as they did across the street. Oh, that's good. That's good because yeah, I remember the night of everybody said, "No, we got to take everybody to Vicksburg, which is right. like 40, 45 miles right. from here." So we need our hospital desperately because yeah. it, it has saved so many lives. Yeah, and because it is, it's forty five minutes to another hospital. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely on that. You said utilities are coming back and the area is not affected. They've got electricity, the water. I've noticed the toilet flushed. That right. was good. So, right. and gas is, you know. We're, we're at, I think we're at everybody that can have electricity yeah. and gas. We're, we're working on that to be 100% by the people that can have it, can yeah. have the service. Yeah by the end of the day Friday the reason why so, um, so this week everybody should have and the water system is back working and yeah yeah maybe so yeah we're just down a water tower <laughs> yeah I know that failed it did fall down yes. yeah it fell. uh well considering that 18 wheelers were thrown around like toys right. and right. The, yeah there was that, that was just even amazing driving through but the water tower did see that yeah. down that so well, as we close out, is there number one? Y'all are on Facebook, right? Did you pretty you do, Yes, you do. I don't have time to, to update the Facebook. What? You're not on social media. <laughs> what else are you doing? Come on. I have somebody that, that is managing the the emergency management page. That's yeah. Facebook. Okay, well, let's right. go there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that that is where like and you know follow and share those because yeah. that's where we're putting information out. Yeah. Uh, the important information. Yeah, and that's the main thing because I think right now people's hearts are in the right place and they want to help, um, but they don't know how to help or they don't right. know the best way to help. Right. And we put, we put as much information as we can yeah. on that page. One of the things I noticed after Katrina as we wrap up that, that it was always the problem was that um, I know this may shock you, but as Americans, our attention spans short. Exactly. You know, and so, and, and also too, I mean, since this tornado, there's been one, the big one in Little Rock, right. there's been one in Missouri today. There's was one in, uh, yeah, there was one this morning in Missouri. So, I mean, it's, this is a need, but the need's still going to be around. So, you know, I, I'll help however I can to kind of keep the attention going too. So, yeah, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're doing okay. I am. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm, all, I'm better than I was last time I talked to you. You were, <laughs> yeah, you were, but you still, um, like you said, you've got a strength that you never knew you had. So, that's pretty, pretty amazing. Thank you. Hey, thank you for watching today. Uh, if you want to check out any other Mississippi Stories episodes, you can go to MississippiToday.org. Hey, make sure you like our page, too, on YouTube. And so, um, and also, too, make sure you check out and if you get a hold of Deer Creek Pilot, do that. But also, um, kind of keep your eye on what Rolling Fork and the other communities around Mississippi need right now. Because, uh, obviously, Mississippians are hurting, and that's what we do best is we help those in need. Y'all, thank you again, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you for watching this episode of Mississippi Stories. Make sure to subscribe to the Mississippi Today YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified every time a new video uploads.